Testing. The stream is proudly brought to you by whatiszs.com. ZS is coming soon. Whatiszs.com would like everybody to know that it really does actually proudly support the legalization of medical cannabis as well as recreational cannabis. And uh, we are very, very proud to sponsor this live stream. Okay, friends, subscribers, and all of you YouTubers out there. Sorry, you weren't supposed to see that transition like that. Um, yes, no, um, I'd like everybody to know first up that um, I do apologise for my absence for the last few weeks. I have actually been trying to organise to get my um, medications, and unfortunately... Uh, yeah, I can't afford them. They're too bloody expensive. So I've been forced to... Um, yeah, it's um, been driving me quite nuts. I've tried absolutely everything to get the medication and um, the government doesn't want to help. So I've had to try to beg and borrow off everybody that I could to actually get access to the money I need to get the medications that I need. But unfortunately, the government doesn't want to give them to me for free. Doesn't want to give them to anybody. Now, I do apologise for the last stream, by the way, folks. There was a major issue with sound, and unfortunately, no one actually told me in the chat. I thought I was actually talking the whole time. And man, did I go. Did I have a good spiel? And... Um, everything and uh, <laughs> I've sort of lost the uh, drive that I had in the very first one but I'm going to try and get it back for you so yes now as you can see by this the endocannabinoid system guess what animals have an endocannabinoid system as well so in other words they're meant to consume cannabis I wonder if this is what you know when dogs eat grass I'm wondering if this is what they're actually looking for. Is it cannabis? They're trying to supplement uh, the cannabis with grass uh, because it's green and everything like that. And it um, be interesting to know, actually, if a dog got into a cannabis field, what they'd actually do. And, um, but dogs and cats, dogs and cats have cannabinoid. <laughs> Can't bloody endocannabinoid systems. Sorry about that, folks. It was a tongue twister. Now, everybody knows that I wrote a letter to Mr. Hunt. Now, um, I'm going to get the uh, that one up there so that you all can see it. And I'm going to take it off studio mode. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to try and get it over in the middle of the screen. So it's not, um, damn, so hang on, I'll pull it off, move that over a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, transition, no, it's still not going to work, okay, I'm just going to read it out, folks, going to be the easiest way. Now, I wrote to the Federal Minister of Parliament, um, because it is still a a federal issue. As far as I'm concerned, this is a federal issue. And it should be a federal issue. Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of one image. I think that's that one. No, is it that one? No. And um, the problem is that um, this should be legal, folks. It truly, truly should be legal. And um, But it's not. Ah, there we go. That's better. Now I can read it and you can read what I'm doing. So what I've actually done, I've actually pasted that letter into the description for everybody so that you can actually see the response that I got. I'm going to read it out to you. 
forgive me if it's um, actually no I've got a better idea I'm going to use my favorite little reader because I'm shocking when it comes to reading folks um, but I what, what shocked me the most was the amount of typos in this document <laughs> I really was and um, now everybody in AIM knows my name's Anthony Avery it's in every video it's on every channel and um, so yeah it's uh, thing so but it came from and not all that letter came over damn it okay so sorry about that I don't have the whole letter but I got it from some doctor in uh, and forgive me I'm going to swap screens for a sec while I um, get the letter up and paste the rest of the letter in and um, yeah but like I'm shocked I'm getting this letter from the Minister of Health, Minister of Health's office in um, New South Wales yet I wrote to the Federal Minister of Parliament so why in the hell am I getting a letter from the Minister of Health when um, oh that's why it won't come on because there's a signature in there Okay, so, uh, sorry folks, I'm just uh, closing that because I just have my email up, so unfortunately. Alright, so that's where the letter came from. It's in the description if you want to read it yourself, but I'm going to read it out for you. But I'm going to use a bit of technology to do it. Um, mainly to the fact that there's so many damn typos and I do have trouble reading at the moment uh, because of the drugs that I'm on. Um, one thing I found out, guess what? The drugs I'm on are actually also called the cause of my vision problems. Uh, not just killing me, but they're killing my vision as well. Now, um, all I want is to actually get a drug that's not going to kill me, that's not going to cause me to be addicted to any drugs, now, um, oh God almighty, this thing drives me nuts sometimes. It's, um, what the hell's going on with this damn thing? What the hell happened to the letter? Oh, okay, hang on folks, I don't know why in the hell this has happened again. I had the letter in, I posted the, pasted the letter in that one. Thing, so I've just got to call the letter up again folks but I do apologize I'm trying to get it up for you so that everybody can actually see this letter I don't know what's happened to it I did paste it in that uh, thing so that everybody could actually read it but um, yeah and I'm going to talk about the coronavirus as well now I'm transmitting to every channel um, now, no matter what channel, in a moment I'm going to um, put the Uber conference number for calling. Now, all you have to do to join the calling when I start the calling, folks, is um, pretty much go to Uber conference. You can either use my actual um, site address, which I'm going to put in there, or you can call in via phone if you want. And um, in America, yes, you can call in via telephone, but in Australia and some other countries, you will have to go directly to um, directly to the uh, the site. And um, so, but the Uber conference details are all in there. I don't know why this has happened. Okay, I had this all all done, and it's for some unknown reason it's dropped out. I've had major internet problems and everything like that. But the reason why I haven't been on, folks, is mainly to the fact that I've actually been trying to raise the money to actually get the drugs I need. One to get off endone. Now, if anybody knows what endone is, endone is oxycodone. Oxycodone is guess what it is. Opium. It's the opium war all over again. They're trying to numb Australia by letting us have opium. Yet when we're on cannabis, um, if we're legal like me, you're more alert. And yes, for the idiots there in Parliament, yes, 
there's a sleeping version of cannabis, there's an alert version of cannabis. You take the alert version of cannabis through the day, you take the sleeping one through the night. Um, the CBDs will help me with my lung cancer that I've just been diagnosed with. They found it by accident, for those that don't know. Um, yeah, they were scanning my brain after, the, um, after my recent stroke and heart attack and they accidentally scanned my lung by scanning too low and found a node in the top of my right lung. And uh, yeah, I've since been uh, scanned. They don't know if it's malignant or benign yet. I won't know for six months. So, but yes, I now have lung cancer on top of all my other things. I qualify for the medical marijuana under five categories. Now, there's 42 categories that uh, you can actually be prescribed medical marijuana. Now, um, I'm still, just forgive me folks, I'm still just setting up the, uh, the letter. So, all right, now I'm just going to get this to actually read it. The computer's going to take over everything now. And so just bear with me a brief moment. And this is what the Minister of Health of New South Wales wrote back to me. Then I'm going to go on with the rant that I had earlier that all of you would have loved. Uh, unless I say, I, like those of that know me, I swear a lot. <laughs> Let's just say I swore quite a lot. Okay, so there's the letter. Oh, I'm sorry. There's the letter on the screen and everything like that. And I'm going to let now, please note that unfortunately there's a bug with this program where the uh, reading jumps ahead of the actual um, speed. And um, so hopefully it, this that just fixed it. Dear Mr. Avery, thank you for your email to the Honorable Oops. Brad Hazard MP, Minister for Health and Medical Research about legalization of cannabis. Sorry, I'll start that again. I think I had it too fast. Um, no, minus one, I think it is, that's the best speed. Dear Mr. Avery, thank you for your email to the Honorable. Brad Hazard, MP, Minister for Health and Medical Research about legalization of cannabis. Minister Hazard has asked me to respond. I am sorry to hear about your health conditions. I acknowledge how distressing chronic pain would be and appreciate your desire to explore all treatment options. In Australia, cannabis medicines are lawfully prescribed within a medical framework to ensure patients have confidence in the safety of their medicines and doctors have a wide choice of quality controlled medicines available for their patients. Okay, I'm going to stop it there for a brief moment. Uh, one, I don't actually have confidence in their medicines because they actually turn around and use alcohols and other medicines to take out different things, which is uh, alcohol extraction is actually one of the most, I'd say more dangerous because you're actually putting alcohol into the medicine. Uh, there are better ways to extract the cannabis uh, resin. In NSW, any doctor can legally prescribe a cannabis medicine if they believe it is an appropriate treatment option and they have obtained the relevant authorities. Now, I'm going to go back to that one in a minute. A doctor can apply for authorization to prescribe an unregistered cannabis medicine for their patient using the special access scheme by lodging an application using the online system on the Therapeutic Goods Administration website, www.tga.gov.au slash special hyphen access hyphen scheme hyphen online system. The NSW government has implemented initiatives to support doctors wishing to prescribe cannabis medicines and improve patient access. In January 2018, the NSW government established the NSW Cannabis Medicines Advisory Service to provide expert clinical advice and support for medical practitioners www.medicinalcannabis.nsw.gov.au slash health professionals slash nsw hyphen cannabis hyphen medicines hyphen advisory hyphen service right parenthesis. Steps were also taken in September 2019 to simplify the application process with the majority of doctors prescribing cannabis medicines. No. Oops, sorry, that happens regularly. Steps were also taken in September 2019 to simplify the application process with the majority of doctors prescribing cannabis medicines no longer requiring prior authorization from NSW Health, 
the only exceptions being when prescribing to children under the age of 16 years, patients with a drug dependency or for a clinical trial of an unregistered medicine. In recognition of the potential for cannabis medicines to alleviate the symptoms of some serious conditions, the NSW government has invested over $9 million to fund clinical trials exploring cannabis use for children with severe epilepsy, palliative care patients with advanced cancer and patients undergoing chemotherapy experiencing nausea and vomiting. Thank you again for writing. If you would like more information, please visit www.medicinalcannabis.nsw.gov.au. Yours sincerely Dr. Kerry Chant PSM Chief Health Officer and Deputy Secretary Population and Public Health. Now, as I said, I wrote to the Minister of Health, but I want everybody to take notice that any doctor can prescribe medical cannabis. Now, I'm just going to jump away from that site um, and I'm going to go to the thing, but then I'm going to jump to the heading of the video. Should a human be forced to live on $10 a fortnight just to afford medication? No. And it's not. And this is what the, the call show is going to be all about. And um, so the whole thing is, it's sort of, now I'm actually streaming to my main channel and doing a live event to the Cannabis Pro Tester and everything like that. So the thing is, it's sort of now the chats will go to every channel, to DLive, to the whole lot of yous and everything. So I'm just doing a little bit of work on the, um, on the stream at the moment, trying to get everything up and running. And um, so that uh, I can see that everybody's uh, getting the getting the different uh, channels and um, but the whole thing is folks that it should be legal this is an absolute joke it truly truly is an absolute joke and um, the the fact that we're going through what we are going through right is an absolute joke and it truly truly is now if you clearly look at those images there like even animals have an endocannabinoid system now, okay, if an animal has an endocannabinoid system, as I said earlier, what if animals should need cannabis? Is that why they're eating grass all the time? Are they trying to actually get cannabis, but they can't find it, so they're eating grass? To them, grass is the closest thing to it. And I've got a funny feeling. I reckon, after looking at that, I actually reckon they do. And this is why they do that. But the thing is, we can't afford the fucking medication. I'm not the only one. I've spoken to about four cancer patients just today, just today, that I've tried to get them on the show, but unfortunately they're all too shy and they don't want people knowing um, that they're on the cannabis program and the fact that they take the drugs that I've got to take. But the drugs I've got to take are fucking killing me. And they, they are. Like last year, I suffered liver failure. I'm on the verge of kidney failure. And yeah, Greg, I actually got your message before, mate. Um, but unfortunately, I had no sound in the last video. And I do apologize for that, Greg. I really, truly do. Um, I'm on the main channel, by the way, today, Greg. But um, for those of you that haven't signed up to the new channel, I've come across back home to this one. Um, now, I will be doing a lot of streams on the Cannabis Protester, but for the last couple of weeks, I have had to try and get my medicines. And I tried living on $10 a fortnight, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to pay some bills. I'm behind on my phone bill because of it, and um, I still haven't raised... I'm actually gone out and paid all those bills today um, because of the simple fact that I can't actually get my medicine. So, um, I've tried everything. I truly have tried everything. And it was senseless trying to live on 10 bucks a fortnight, folks. I didn't last four days. I lasted on 10 bucks. And I ate the most minimum thing. Devon, which I got for $3.99, and bread. I ate that for four days. And let's just say after four days, I was fucking sick of it. The only reason I actually survived is because I'm a prepper. And um, I went through 
a shitload of my prep food. I actually just replace that today. And um, I had to actually break into those emergency stores so that I could actually eat. And even then, I still couldn't survive. It's sort of to the stage where I had to go shopping and end up buying food. And you can't do that. Now, you think about it. Okay. This is not free. The, you can't get it on the PBS. You can't get it on Closing the Gap. Now, for those of you that don't know what Closing the Gap is, uh, no, Greg, uh, I haven't actually. I didn't. Uh, did you send it to my standard one? Uh, can you resend it? I've had a bit of email problems, Greg. Um, oh, yeah, that one I did. Yeah, I did, Greg, I did. Yeah, but uh, let's just say I'll send you a better one. Um, but the whole thing is, it's sort of, it's a freaking joke. Now, back in the days when I used to work with Greg, um, I was a, a regular smoker. A regular smoker. I smoked every day. Oh, pretty much everybody said I fucking didn't stop smoking except when I was at work. And um, But the whole thing is that, uh, yes, I can see you there, Nikita. Uh, you're over on the Cannabis Protest. Good girl. Now, sign up and don't forget to subscribe and link the notify button while you're over there. Now, the thing is, it sort of... Um, if you're, It doesn't matter where you're on DLive or any of the other channels, your chat will come through to this chat that I'm looking at uh, I use Restream, by the way, and I get everybody. It sort of so I'm transmitting to currently. Uh, I think today I'm transmitting to about twelve different channels, and um, it sort of uh, yeah, it's um, just pees me off that I can't get my fucking medication. Like when I was in Canberra, folks, and I had access to medical marijuana for one week. In that one week, I was able to reduce from eight endo in a day, eight panadine four a day, down to six, pan uh, six endo in a day, and down to six panadine four a day. By the last day, I'd gotten down to four a day. Now I'm back on eight on a beach, eight a day, just so that I can live. Oh, sorry, okay, no, no, no worries, mate, it's all cool. Oh, no, Kitty, okay, no worries. Um, <laughs> sorry, dude. Um, I just saw the picture of the... Oh, okay, it is a bloke, sorry, dude. <laughs> I just saw the dark hair and the long hair. I thought it was a lady, sorry, mate. Um, but the, um, the problem is that people that need this medication... Now... The government says they don't know if it works. Well, okay, why are we the biggest fucking producer of cannabis? Yeah, cannabis medicines. They don't know it works. Yeah, right. Now, I'm going to jump to these images that I've saved. I've just got to open them up. Now, this one here. Right, where is it? This one here. Now, we have a cannabinoid system, folks. And um, yet we, right, THC present uh, when smoking marijuana, and it's also found in oils, everything. Now, we have cannabinoid um, receptors throughout our whole body. That is a known fact. We also have receptors that talk to each other. They have certain purposes. They stimulate, okay, cannabis Release pain, stimulates appetite, reduces vomiting and nausea, reduces con uh, contract uh, contractions in small intestines. Also, by the way, it can actually help with contractions during pregnancy. Uh, some people say it's not advised, but let's just say I know a couple of females that smoked right through the whole pregnancy, didn't feel an ounce of pain. Um, I won't mention her name, but I used to go out with her. It's um, one of my ex-girlfriends, one of the mothers of my children. Uh, relieves anxiety, reduces seizures and convulsions, suppresses muscle spasms. Now, I can uh, vouch for that one. Uh, reduces blood sugar levels. And yes, when I was on cannabis in Can Canberra, my blood sugars went back to normal. They went from being 27 to where I needed 100 units of insulin a day. I'm still actually only 
back up to 25 um, units a day, but it's getting worse. It's slowly getting worse because I haven't been able to access the medicine. And um, it reduces nervous system degeneration. It reduces risk of um, arterial blockages. Let's just say I haven't felt, um, when I was in Canberra, I did not feel the blockages in my neck and I've got the blockages and everything. And um, the, the thing is, it sort of just pisses me off when they uh, do shit like this. It really does. And, but the fact that I wrote to the Minister of fucking Australia, he sends it all the way down to a doctor in fucking New South Wales. Oh no, trust me, you know what I'm doing tomorrow? I'm going to do a stream tomorrow through the day. And I'm actually going to call fucking Canberra on Monday. Not tomorrow, on Monday. I'm going to call Canberra on Monday whilst I'm streaming. I'm not even going to tell them that I'm streaming. So everybody's, if you want to see a good fucking show, listen to that one. Uh, it's public office. I have the right to um, record a conversation with anybody. And, um, but I'm not actually recording it. I'm transmitting it. <laughs> I'm letting everybody hear what the conversation is about. <laughs> and it's going to happen, trust me. I'm going to make this public on Monday. So be, I'm oh, not Monday, in the Monday. No, it can't be Monday. Fuck, I've got college. Uh, it'll have to be Wednesday. I'll do it on Wednesday. I'm going to ring the minister's office on Wednesday. Hopefully he watches this and hears about it. Um, I'm going to do it live on Wednesday. Yeah, I've just realised, yeah, I've got college Monday and Tuesday, so I can't do it Monday, Tuesday. I will do it on Wednesday. Don't know what time, but it will be during office hours. And I'm going to transmit that conversation live. It won't be with the minister, it's just going to be with some poor underling, unfortunately. They do it, by the way, you do a great job in Canberra, all you workers, you do a fantastic job. You really, truly do. You deserve medals for putting up with some of the shit that we give you. And yes, um, I know, like I've never given you crap, I've always treated you as nice, but some people don't. And so I've got a lot of support for all the workers down in Canberra, oh, trust me. Um, never ever give a worker in Canberra, you ring Parliament House or anybody like that, a minister's office, don't give them shit. Trust me, they are really nice people and they actually agree with us. They believe it should be legal all over Australia. So, but the problem is, we don't get the support and we don't get the truth. Now, the endocannabinoid system, as I said, is not just in us, but in animals. And yet we can't get access to these drugs. Four hundred and fucking fifty dollars for my script. That's right, folks. Four hundred and fifty fucking dollars. And all my friends said, why in the fuck aren't you eating? You know, like I... Do you know that I now have to put two holes in my belt? Two fucking holes in my belt. And, um, yeah. It, sorry, Greg, I didn't... Um, what do you mean by that, Greg? Um, because I've lost that much weight in the last couple of weeks. I really have. And this is why I haven't been streaming, folks. I've been trying to get my medicine. I've been trying to find ways to get my medicine, i.e. not fucking meat. I tried to survive on $10 a fucking fortnight. It can't be fucking done. It really cannot be fucking done. Food is fucking too fucking expensive. And yet they want me to pay $450. Now, for those of you that don't know, I'm actually on a disability support pension. I have major spinal injuries. I have... Now, by the way, both knees have gone. My, my right and left knee finally went the other day. Um, I have a, a right knee that's, oh, I'd say, approximately double the size of my left. I have a hip that is always in pain because when they did my back surgery, they took part of my hip and used it to fix my back, which didn't work, by the way. I've got damage to my neck from a car accident. I've got nine degenerated in my the rest of my spine. So I've got a total of 13 discs in my back fucked. And I mean, they're fucked. I'll never heal. That's why I'm on a pension. 
Um, no one will hire me because the moment they find out about my injuries, they just say sorry and they won't take the risk. I tried to get a job in a disability service. They wouldn't even take the risk. And because, unfortunately, because of my condition, I'm what they classify as a high risk employee and uh, wouldn't do it. Mainly because of the fact that I've got to take Endone and Panadine Fort every day. I have to take Panadine Fort in the day to handle the pain through the day because if I don't, if I take my Endone, I can't drive my car for four hours. You know, Panadine Fort because of the fact that um, it doesn't affect me. I can uh, go. Oh yeah, no, they'll be open, Greg. Trust me, they'll be open. If they're not, I'll ring his office, and I'm going to ring his office as well. I'm going to try and talk to him no matter what. And um, but the whole thing is, and by the way, folks, I am responding to the chat. And unfortunately, I haven't got the chat. I have been trying to get the chat in, uh, I think it's actually, uh, in, actually, where are we? Scene two, there we go. Just gonna add the restream chat to the channel, folks. Uh, where is it? Um, shit, what is it? It's a browser, isn't it? There it is. Restream chat, there we go. I'm just gonna add this chat to the to window folks and I'm just gonna pull it over here so everybody can read it. Um, I think that's the one, is it? Yep, that's the one. So I'm just setting up the chat for you so that you can all can read the chat folks. And um, yeah. So um, so that you, those of you out there that knows what's actually going on. Thanks Greg, by the way. And as I said before, I used to actually work with Greg and thank you, Nakia. I can't actually pronounce it. Um, I used to work with Greg in the old days and I'm pretty sure he knew that I was stoned all the time. And um, But see, the thing is, back in those days, I did not take one narcotic except cannabis. I didn't need narcotic drugs back then. But unfortunately, when the laws got very, very strict in Queensland, or yeah, let's just say... I started needing, I had to go down to the doctors downstairs. We had a doctor downstairs in our, um, at our work. And I had to go down there every single day to make, make sure that I had um, some kind of pain relief through the day. And um, I spent most of the night getting drunk because I couldn't take um, the tablets at night because I was in a, a club and I had to drink with my, my customers because that was part of my job was drinking with the customers and uh, let's just say the, a lot of the barmen didn't like that they thought it, they were a bit jealous of me <laughs> got a bit uh, shit that I could actually drink and they couldn't uh, but, but that was part of my job my, my job was yeah communicating with the customers I sat down drunk with them they'd buy me drinks I'd buy them drinks uh, and uh, that's what PR is but the thing is like the um, some days I even needed morphine and uh, for many years after I left the club and went down and came home I was quite regularly put into hospital uh, yeah okay and picking up women Craig. <laughs> that was my constant love but the thing is it's um, the the point is I have been on narcotic drugs now for over 30 years and um, it's, no, is it 30 years? Uh, hang on. Yeah, it's, no, nearly 30 years, sorry. Nearly 30 years. And they're killing me, folks. Last, like, my liver is that bad, it's swollen. You can actually see it. Like, if I don't even pull my stomach in, my right side of my stomach is swollen. It looks like I've got a massive tumour. I've got a swollen spleen. And again, guess what? The endone and panadine forward are causing it. But if I don't take them, I've got to go to hospital and get a morphine shot because I can't afford the fucking cannabis. I'm legally entitled to it. I have a fucking script, but I can't fucking afford it. I cannot fucking afford it. And as long as I'm on this particular planet, I'm going to fight, no matter what. I am going to fight. And... Um, I don't care what fucking verse I'm in. I'm going to fight this until the fucking day I die if it's not fucking legal. Because 
It should at minimum be decriminalized. So people like me that are in a lot of pain. And on average, go down and I'll tell you what to do. I'll tell you what to fucking do. Everybody you meet that you don't know, just say, uh, do you ever suffer pain? Ask them. Just do a little personal survey. Guess what? If they are over the age of 30, do you know what the rate is going to be? 100%. Did you know that actually, and the government knows this, over 90% of Australians believe that cannabis should be legal. 90% of Australians want cannabis to be legal. 90% of Australians have smoked cannabis. Now, by the way, I'm in the process of starting the Uber conference. Now, I'm going to... Um, just got to put the things up. I finally got that sorted out. I'm just going to... This free conference call is provided by Uber conference. You are the first participant on this Uber conference. Uh, hang on. Please hold while we wait for the others to join. Okay, stop the whole music. Now, if anybody wants to call in, okay, um, it, these are the numbers. If you're in America, right? If you are in America, you can call this number direct. But if you're in Australia, all you've got to do is go to that website address, right? The Uber conference slash cannabis protester if it asks you for the pin i'll get the pin i thought i put the pin in oh the pin is there pin is there um sorry i'll make it a bit easier so you can actually see the pin uh because the pin i fucked up with that one i didn't put a big enough space between the pin that uh, and why is it doing that the pin is the second number the eight zero two three zero but if you go to Uber Conference slash Cannabis Protester, you should come straight into the stream. So, look, if you want to come in and have your say to the Minister of Health, please do so right now. Please feel free to call in to the show. And um, if you've got cancer, if you've got any type of pain, I don't care what country you are in, right? Because everybody's currently got this problem. Right, now I looked up some uh, different sites and everything today. Countries, where is it? Countries where cannabis is legal. Now listen to this list. Hang on, I'm going to put it up so that you can see it as well. Transition that over. Okay, well, I never even knew about Canada being legal until a couple of weeks ago. And um, so Canada, Canada comes up as the first one. Mexico, Belize, Costa Rica, Jamaica, Argentina, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Uruguay, Uruguay, Cambodia, Laos, North Korea. North Korea? It's legal. Fucking North Korea, I shit myself when I read that. Belgium, Italy, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, Switzerland, Croatia. Czech Republic, uh, Republic, Estonia, Russia, Ukraine, Australia. Should you smoke? Signs point to yes, but guess what? No signs point to no. You'll get fucking arrested. And what's in there? Uh, the mic is crackling. Uh, okay. No, that's my voice, Greg. That's my voice crackling. Um, yeah. Now, countries where it's illegal, right? Thailand. Still illegal. It's always been illegal in Thailand. Okay. Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, Andorra, Angola, uh, I can't. And Argentina. I thought, no, Argentina. Oh, no, it's decriminalised in uh, a couple of those. Illegal in Armenia, Australia. It's not de. It's okay, yeah. Northern Territory, by the way, folks. How about that? Um, possession on growing cannabis for personal thing they can grow it in Northern Territory oh your mic's playing up no worries mate sorry um, Northern Territory it's fucking legal but yeah it goes on fucking it's but second well, most of this we must be second world because unfortunately the sec it's the second world countries 
where it's illegal. Dozens of events. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to put that on. Um, but it's got, you can look up different things and everything like that, WC, WA, and both ACT have decriminalised it, Northern Territory, yet New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, and South Australia, we're fucked. We do anything, we get arrested. And um, let's just say I'm in fear because I'm protesting that they're going to do me for some fucking bullshit charge. And um, but let's just say I'm, they most probably try and pull me over for fucking um, on the cannabis, but they can't because I'm not you're not able to fucking afford it. Like I've got CBD for for the day and I've got THC for the night, and that's another thing too. This fucking so-called, if it's in your system, you get arrested. That's fucking bullshit. And um, because it is, it is fucking bullshit. If it's in your system, of course it's going to stay in your fucking system. But cannabis lasts max five fucking hours. They should have a, um, what do they call it? What's that name of that? Uh, they used to do it in the old days. Before all the, the, the alcohol tests. Um, where they make you walk and shit like that. Yeah, I've got the email, Greg. Yeah, I've got the email. I'll send you a better one. And um, the the point is, it's sort of... It's wrong that we can't get it. Now, there is a new story in here that I actually want to play everybody. I've got to find it. Mr. Hunt. Uh, where is he? Where is he? I had it up here. Where the fuck did it go? But, um, it must have been that one. I'll refresh that page. No. Now, this is a new story. I can't act because this is, yeah, field sobriety test. Um, is that the one? No. Hello, Mr. Hump. Now remember folks, this is a new story, I can actually play this one. And I don't give a shit if they um, demonetize my video. Be rejected yeah. by the grip. Risks the health of Australians, it should be rejected and they should withdraw it and we will oppose it. That's the arsehole I'm trying to get on the, on the chat, alright? That's the guy I really want on the chat. Shoot, is anybody in the... No, no one's in the channel. Come on, folks. Someone call in. It's sort of... Um, I want to talk to somebody. Yeah, do you suffer any sort of pain? Have you used cannabis? Come in the show and tell me. You don't have to... No one's going to know your name because everybody has pretty much got fake names on YouTube. And... Um, yeah, come on the show and talk about it. It's sort of... Um, I want you to have your say. You, like, I don't care who you are. You can call in from America. The American number is there. It's 781-448-4278 and you use the pin 80230. Or if you're in any other country that just go to www.uberconference. You do have to sign up to Uber Conference. It doesn't take long. It takes about three seconds. And um, just go straight to that website and you'll come straight into this chat. All you need is a microphone, and that's it. If you've got a microphone and that, type that address in, and you can come into this chat room, and you can talk to me directly. And I want people to come in and talk to me. And yes, I'm still using, you'll notice it's the cannabis protester one, and I'm transmitting on uh, my main channels and all my other channels, um, but I strongly feel for this subject because I can't get this drug that I need. I can't live on the money that it would take. It would take my whole pension. I would be left with $10 per fortnight to live on just to get my medication that I need every two weeks. So I've either got a choice. I can pay my bills and live and eat 
Or, okay, have we got a caller? Hello, caller. Hello. Yeah, hi, how are you? Uh, who am I talking with? Uh, my name is Nachi Keta, and uh, who oh. am I speaking to? Nachi Teta, you're, um, you're talking to Anthony, mate. Also known as a cannabis okay, protester. Okay, hey, how's it going? All right, you're yeah, you've been on the show. Um, question first: Have you ever used cannabis? Yes. Okay. Have you ever used it for pain or other things like that? Yes. Okay. Got one last question: Did you ever get addicted? Uh. Yes and no. I mean, it is, uh, um, you know, it, it, and it, it's, it's, you got the it's, psychological you know, side. Like, um, yeah, you got the psychological side. Yeah. Uh, sort of, did you know you actually yeah, can't yeah, get you addicted? Have, you do have the psychological It, yeah. it is not really addicting, no. Yeah. Like, it's not like, they could think worse. Alcohol is worse, for sure. Yeah. But like, you can't lie about uh, the effects of marijuana. It does make you want to uh, smoke it and to uh, consume it every day. And it's not, there's like not like a physical need for it, but definitely, you know, you do get um, attached to the sensation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's just like alcohol. You, if you want alcohol, you can get alcohol. But um, it's sort of, it's actually been proven. Uh, uh, sorry, how do you pronounce your name again? Um, you can call me Mike. It's Mike. Okay. No Mike. worries. Yeah. I haven't. It, is not, it? It, but it's not Chiketa. Is the uh, is the proper? It's four syllables. Not Chiketa. But it's okay. Mike is fine. And no, the, no worries, Mike. Okay, mate. Yeah, it is a tough one, mate. Um, but the thing is, it's sort of so many people out there um, have the need. Do you suffer like major pain? Have you got any major problems or anything like that? Um, no, I would say not. I would say I'm 30. Yeah, I'm uh, 41 now, and okay. uh, I live in India Yep. Uh, now. I used to, I was both Korea, I grew up in America, uh, I went back to Korea, and now I live in India. Yeah, but you're visiting the States at the moment, I gather. No, actually, I'm not. I'm, I, it, it seems like I'm calling from the States, but I'm not. Oh, okay, no worries. Yep, but um, no, it's cool. Uh, sort of, um, but the whole thing is what I'm going to do so that people can't actually see uh, people's details. I will actually remove that. Uh, go back to this screen so everybody can read the chat. Can't read it on that one. But um, like, what in America? Like when you're in America, the the level of people using in America is. Are they having any major problems in America with it that you know of? Well, uh, so um, I was adopted in 1989, grew up in the 90s. So I remember 90s quite well when I was growing up. My first experience with marijuana was probably about 8th grade. 7th grade, 8th grade-ish there. 8th grade, I think. No, 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 I'm sorry. Actually, it was a school. It was high school. It was my first experience with marijuana because I was an uh, ambitious uh, middle schooler yeah. and uh, you know uh, and I grew up in a small town Wisconsin yeah. Wisconsin is Wisconsin yep no worries but um, has yeah. it did it affect the, like from a personal point of view do you reckon that that affected the crime rate in America did it drop I don't, well, I don't know. I don't know what the crime rate is now. I imagine it'd be worse now, but like I grew up in a small town in America, so it'd be there. Like there wasn't a whole lot of crime where I was. Um, but uh, you know, marijuana was uh, regularly used by people, uh, uh, among my friends anyway, often. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you know anybody that actually does use um, for medical reasons and stuff like that? Uh, but I mean, I've had some like um, acquaintances, you can say, who have had cancer and they've uh, um, had cancer, but they still have, they use CBD oil. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I I've been in India and Nepal for a past five, six years, and it's uh, quite uh, normal. It's just, uh, it's just 
just like herbs here. <laughs> you know, nobody thinks about it as like a quote unquote drug. You know, it's like yeah. they don't. Nobody need to send police for this. Kind of, you know. Oh, it's the same here. Everybody here knows that knows that it's not dangerous. Um, like I've been, um, and I have to admit it, I've been using since I was uh, fifteen because I pinched some of mum's that was in the bowl on the table when she didn't know because the, in those days they had big bowls sitting on the table and sort of they used to flout the law or something shocking in those days, and uh, no one cared. Um, that was before the laws got tough here. And I just pinched some off mum, and let's just say, because I've, I've had pain since I was a young fellow. I, I had my first accident um, with my knee when I was 14, so... And it did help with pain. And um, it sort of gets me that uh, all the countries and everything like that... Is it... Oh, by the way, is it legal in India? Can you, uh, can you speak a little bit louder? And oh, sorry, I turned it... I, I sorry. Have, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I turned my head. I didn't realise it. Is that better? Oh, that, actually, I think I know what's wrong. I'll just be one second. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I turned my head, unfortunately, but I do know what's wrong with the microphone. I'll just fix that while I'm at it. And um, But the whole point of it is it's sort of like legal legalisation. It needs to happen in every single country. Oh, yeah, it is actually yeah, exactly what I thought. I've got to fix the levels. Is that better? Much better, thank you. Yeah, no worries. It was a um, reboot from when I had all the sound issues in the first stream. Now, um, we, as I said, with India, is it actually legal in India? Actually, I don't know that information. I don't think so. I, I, India and Nepal is still like uh, categorically illegal, but yeah. because of the youth and the uh, general attitude, like people kind of. You know, when you when I first arrived to, to uh, Kathmandu, I wanted to get some hash, and uh, these guys at rickshaws, you know, they hook you up, they ask you if you want it, but they do it really, you know, kind of underhandedly. So yeah. I mean, you know, people are afraid of getting arrested, but it's very loose. You know, nothing is regulated here, really. Yeah. Uh, just a question, like on average, what would access to that cost you in India? The actual physical cost, say, in US dollars. Okay, well, um, uh, I, yeah, I, I just, I'm, I, I used to smoke a lot of uh, uh, chocolate, so they come in like hash form, so they yeah. come in like this kind of uh, sticky black kind of uh, tarry substance, or sometimes if they're higher quality, they're kind of pollenish, you know, like green in color, a yeah. uh, little bit more clay in substance. Yeah. So generally people don't, I mean, people do smoke weed, but it's not like the kind of weed that you can get in America. And I don't know about Australia, but I imagine like Australia is similar to like America and Canada in terms of culture yeah. of uh, cannabis, where, you know, some people grow like indoor or, you know, a hydroponic cannabis on their own. And then they probably put, put in like uh, little baggies and sell them, you know, uh, you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you do that in Australia, mate. You go to jail for five years. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, um, yeah, it needs it needs to be decriminalised all over the globe. It's it has gone beyond a joke. There is so I much. Don't... Sorry. No, I don't disagree. I mean, I I agree. I'm sorry. I I agree. I, you know, like uh, you you're on point. It should it it should be it's God given plant. Yeah. For us, we have the receptors in our body to to uh, consume it, and other drugs that's available are not healthy for people. All these ph pharmaceutical stuff, they're horrible. They're horrible, and weed can take care of a lot of the issues yeah. uh, a person has. You know, that one drug, yeah, yeah. That one plant in itself can, you know, uh, oh. really help a lot of people and. Uh, uh, this whole pharmaceutical stuff is really, really, really a downer because, yeah. like, you know, people have to get in lines, go to clinics, and get prescriptions, and it costs a lot of money, and uh, and people get addicted to them. They got like um, uh, side issues with them. I mean, there's all kinds of issues with all that stuff. You yeah. Know that, right. Um, one of the problems with um, the cannabis oil that the government sells in any country is the fact they're using alcohol to. Um, to refine it, 
to bring it down into an oil. And that's what they're getting addicted to is the alcohol. Wow. Yeah. It's sort of, it's the, they're using a uh, dangerous drug to refine a healthy drug and they say, oh no, this is healthier. Right. And it's fucking ridiculous. It really is. It's but, a. It's a. Do you consume it or do you apply it? Do you consume it or apply it? Um, no, I actually, um, when I get it, when I can afford it, you take drops in Canberra. Or like I got access to it when I was down in Canberra, where it is legal. My friend looked after me when I had a stroke, ah. and um, he wouldn't let me ah. go. When I first had my uh, last stroke, he took me down there and looked after me for a, sorry, second last stroke, and looked after me for a week and uh, gave me access to it. And as I said, I actually reduced my um, endone consumption down. I'm actually now back up to the full doses of endone and panadine fort just to kill the pain. And um, yeah, they're killing me. And my insulin need is back up. Right. I was off insulin when I was in Canberra. With, by the time I'd left Canberra, I was actually off insulin. My sugars were five. And it does truly work. And yet, on, there's no medical evidence. This is what we get told. That letter that I read out earlier, that was a genuine letter from the, mini, uh, from the minister's office in uh, New South Wales here. And um, it's an absolute joke uh, what, they, what they do. It's sort of, they don't give a shit about you. They palm it off and they, you get palmed off to somebody else and palmed off to the next guy and then palmed off to the next guy and palm, oh, okay. Um, oh no, Gre uh, yeah, Greg, they um, have used, I know that when they first did it, they actually used acetone. The first uh, medical marijuana was actually done with um, acetone. And uh, in the old days, they did it with acetone as well. And um, sorry, I was just answering the chat. But I've seen, like I watched, I've been watching. No, uh, what is it? What is um, acetone? The Can you nail polish. What acetone is? That nail polish remover you use. Um, it's also used for in acetone is what is used in uh, fiberglass industry. That really dangerous substance that's um, used to thin down um, fiberglass resin. And because it's uh, used to thin down, they just assume resin and mixed it with acetone, they soon realized how dangerous it was and then they swapped to alcohol and um, found that they could refine it a bit healthier, but unfortunately with the alcohol in it, it's not healthy. Uh -huh. yeah. Cannabis can actually be removed, like the resin can actually be removed into a safe substance. Like if you've ever tried hand rubbed um, hash, hand rubbed hash is a different process. You freeze it, you put it through a sieve on um, like let's just say i've actually today i watched about 200 videos uh, just small ones and different ways on how it's processed and things like that ready for this stream just so i knew what was going on and i wanted to know what they did how they process it and every single one when it came to medical marijuana they you oh yeah no i'll talk about that one in a second greek um they used alcohol yet cannabis can be uh, the resin out of cannabis can be taken out with with coconut oil it can be taken out with water that is the the purest way to do it is actually just wash it wash it with clean fresh water and extract it with yeah. and they get pure resin pure resin no alcohol, nothing. And um, it's a joke. Like, right. I was, uh, here, sorry. Just, no, here, people just, they go up to a plant and then they, they just use their hands. They just kind of have it like, uh, they pat their hands with, on the leaves. Yep. And then they have uh, resin on their hands and they just scrape it, you know. Yeah, and, uh, uh, rubbing it. Usually fell. In, uh, where is it, uh, Afga Afghanistan, I think it was, or no, in India, in India, there was, I watched a video where right. it's called cream, and um, the government goes up the mountain uh, every couple of weeks, and uh, every couple of months, sorry, and destroys their crops, but what they do, everybody in over there, so what they do, they rub it in their hands, 
uh, just fresh cannabis cannabis yeah. buds. They just rub it in their hands and then they push their hands on it and get it into a ball and they put that away and then they rub another one into their hands and they get all the resin off it that way and they get a more blackish yeah. resin. Yeah, yeah. But see, then you're getting the contaminants yep. off the hand and off the leaves and everything like that. But if they simply just freeze it and then wash it, they get the cleanest resin. Like it comes out white even. They can get it to the stage where it's so clean right. they're, they're getting just pure resin and all they're doing is washing it with water. They don't need all these fucking chemicals that they're using. And see, the governments, they're trying to, like, modify it and say, oh, well, this process is, oh, we're extracting this. All they're doing is doing exactly the same. But do you know, I've worked it out that the medical cannabis is five times more expensive than illegal. Five times. Wow. Five times. Five times more Damn. expensive. Like... In the old days... Why I, would you ever spend money on Yeah, I know. In the old days, when it was um, when it was illegal and I used to smoke, I used to buy half an ounce in the old days. And um, that lasted me for two weeks. And that was actually sharing it with friends and people I met in the club industry and um, just having a smoke with them. And... Um, Mate, even back in those days, I, I can honestly say I have smoked with police officers. And that is not a lie. Um, and um, I've got to admit, they thought I was dealing drugs up there. So they, they sort of got me to yeah, smoke drugs and everything. And, um, and they, they didn't realise I'd realise they were cops. But it didn't worry me. I've smoked with so many cops over the years. It's beyond a fucking joke. And um, they sort of trying to get all the information out. It wasn't me that was the drug dealer. It was one of my customers, customers unfortunately. And um, they spent three days, like, chatting me up and everything like that. And um, unfortunately, um, one of the things that they tried on me gave me major problems and I got rushed to hospital. And they eventually told me who they were. And um, they said, look, do you know who it, who it is and everything like that? But they smoked just as much as I did. Even though they were undercover, they smoked just as much as I did. That was their excuse, they were undercover. But it <laughs> turned out I wound up being great friends with them. But over the years, I've smoked, seriously smoked with politics. Oh, uh, they weren't a politician at the time. But they went on to be a politician. They're no longer a politician now. But, like, and this is what it is. See, in Canberra, where our, he our capital is, they're allowed to smoke. Our pollies can go out the street and grow two plants. That's fucking bullshit. They can smoke, but we can't get access to the medical fucking marijuana, or we can't grow plants ourselves. We, we grow and we go to jail. That's fucking bullshit. And this is what we're putting up May with I America. May I ask you a question? Yes. So you uh, you said that you were smoking with the police and you you uh, smoked with some friends or people that you knew who became politicians. That's all fine. That's all good. But when did things start to change? When did things really start to hunker down where you were like kind of more free with it, you know, smoking um, with people? And uh, when did it start to change? About 1990. 19, um, oh, shit. I just found out they actually chatted to the bar staff as well. Shit, <laughs> I didn't know that, Greg. Yeah, the, for three days I got off me tits. Um, sorry, one of my... Uh, Greg here, I used to work with Greg in a nightclub. And um, it's uh, about 1990, wasn't it, when it, the real crackdown started, wasn't it, Greg? I think it was. I have no idea for... Uh, uh, uh... It, was, it was illegal, but it wasn't really... They'd leave you alone. If you were just a smoker, they'd leave you alone. And like, i.e., they thought I was dealing, so they came and questioned me and everything like that because I was in a position of power um, in the nightclub industry. And so they, right. thought I, they thought I was the one dealing because there was a pretty major dealer in our club. As I said, it turned out to be a customer. But um, 
uh, yeah, Greg just said they ended up chatting to, uh, chatting to all of them. Uh, sort of, um, but the whole thing is, it's sort of, all I was, I was just a smoker. And 95% of the time, all I did, I went out and bought half an, half, a, half an ounce. And that lasted me two weeks. It cost me, back in those days, it cost me $32. Because I had to pay $2 for the petrol to go and get it. 30 bucks for a half an ounce. Now, uh, does anybody know, anybody in Australia know how much it costs now? Uh, anybody? <laughs> there must be somebody <laughs> knows how much it costs. Here, here in India, you can, get, you can get grams anywhere between 15 to $30. Okay, 15 to 30 quality, that's, in, 15, that's in the US. $15 for 10 grams. 10. Oh, wow, that's and fucking cheap. United States dollars, 10 American. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I meant uh, $15. That'll be t um, for 10 grams. 10 grams is about 15 US dollars. 15 to 16 US dollars is uh, kind of like about as low as they can go. Yeah. As far yeah. as 10 grams is concerned. Oh, I just. And then uh, you can get, and they're, you know, up to $50 for 10 grams before for higher quality stuff where yeah. it's like more creamy, you know, and uh, it's like different type of high because the cheaper stuff kind of make you a little bit groggy yeah a little bit like you know yeah it's kind of like really stoned yeah. uh kind of kind of feel but like the other stuff it's like you're high but you're really like hyper aware so too you know it's not you're not you're not sleepy as much you're like really yeah. like focused yeah and i'm just going to say hello to another friend thank you for the text and i uh, just got a text from a friend that uh, is watching the show that uh, it's apparently twenty dollars for a gram, and it would now cost me a hundred and eighty dollars to anywhere from a hundred and eighty dollars to two hundred dollars, and that would last me for two weeks yeah, if I had that. Uh, but right. the medicine's four hundred fifty fucking dollars. Yeah. Oh here, I'll, um, I don't know. I haven't uh, partaken for a while. I've been not since I began, uh, sort of um, left the club industry. Um, I've been too scared and plus back in uh, for a while I was a, a shooter before I had my strokes I lost my gun license because I had a stroke but I always stayed as legal as I could because I um, enjoyed having a gun license and going shooting and target practice and hunting and everything like that so I stayed as clean as a whistle for so many, nearly 30 years I stayed clean and um, the yeah. I'd still be still be clean I like now, if I didn't have the script, but I just can't even get that. So I still officially am clean, but I need the medical cannabis and I can't fucking afford it. Like we've got a, a system here called PBS where we get medicines for free. And um, they will give me narcotic drugs for a whole month if I need them. They will give me that for free of charge under two schemes I can get it. Yet, when I need to get a drug that's non-addictive, can't fucking kill me, you can't overdose on it, I've got to pay $450 for it. I would, as I said, I would have to live on, I actually tried to do it. I tried to live on $10 a fortnight. Sorry, I'm trying to read chat and I'll keep on getting texts. Put your comments in the chat, not in the text. Oh, okay, in New Zealand, fuck me, $370. So it's about the same price in New Zealand. It's here. Um, thanks, Craig. Uh, or Craig. Or Craig. Um, but, oh, $90 a quarter. Okay, thank you, Greg. Um, but the thing is, it's sort of, for $450 for, this, for two weeks, I could buy it illegally cheaper. And get, of course. Yeah, get better effects because it's not fucking um, got alcohol in it. It's not going to fucking cause any major problems. And all I'd have to do is put it in fucking coconut oil. Yeah. And um, it would distract all the resin. Yeah. It would do the exact same fucking job. But they want to charge me this fucking sky high price for the medicine just so they can make fucking money out of it. Of it's course a, they do. Yeah, it's the major pharmaceutical companies. Oh, right? yeah. That's all there is about. All this legal system, uh, all this, like, 
a control system. It's about, you know, elevating more and more power and money in that process. Yeah. You know, and it, I agree. I spoke. Like, it should be available to everyone. It's cheap. It, it, government can grow it really easy. Everybody can grow it really easy. You know, back in America, back in the day, if you, if you were a farmer, you were required to grow one sixteenth of your land marijuana. Yeah, exactly. But I remember. You know, but it wasn't called marijuana back in those days. It was called hemp and cannabis. See, the, what happened in uh, 19, 1918, there was one of the politicians, he was a paper producer, had his fingers in oil, and um, they saw the problems that hemp would, was causing their, their industry. And it was causing them major problems. But see, what they didn't realise... Cannabis was in every fucking pharmacy. Every pharmacy. So they changed the name. They used the Mexican name marijuana. Then made it out to be an evil drug. Yep. Just to protect his profit. And that's why I got fucking... And it was like... It's like the alcohol prohibition. It sort of... It was a joke. See, they thought the alcohol prohibition was going to stop it. But... Mr. Hunt, guess what? You haven't stopped it. The only people you've stopped are the ones that don't want to get in trouble. That don't want to, like me, that don't want to go, like, don't want to wind up in a, I can't, if I wound up in a jail, I'd be screwed. I'd be in the hospital all the fucking time. Um, I'd never get out of the hospital because I'd have to be looked after. Um, I'd have to have my medications and because of my medications, they'd have to put me in the hospital section. I'd most probably get it for free then because I'm legally allowed to have it. <laughs> never thought of that. Oh, I never thought of that one. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to do that. I like having a clean record. But, um... Well, I don't know, man. It's a, it's a fucking joke. It really is. Like I, like, I only found out today that animals have a cannabinoid system. Animals. It's... It's like dead set. They they have the cannabinoid system in their system. Just trying to bring it up on the... Oops, shit, what happened there? What just happened there? Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to get the image. I've got to unlock no. it. So, um... And well, yeah, they... Yeah, there it is there right. on the screen. And um, in that cannabinoid system... For an animal, because see, I've always wondered why dogs ate grass. And yeah, I heard you saying that. I heard you talking about that earlier. And you think about it. You look at cannabis. What does it look like? Grass. Maybe they associate. Maybe grass. grass is. <laughs> maybe grass. Normal everyday grass is as close as the dog can get when they're sick. Yeah. Because they only eat it when um, they're sick. Animals, no. Yeah, but animals have really high, um, like they have their own ability to uh, identify plants and things. They, like they don't have names for it, but they, they can identify it by the smell of it. And they would know what a marijuana is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You it know, might be why dogs can is. smell it. I'm, I'm just, yeah, I just think it's just possible that they, they need some uh, fiber. You know, so if they ate a lot of meat or some kind of dog food that does, that's not sitting very well with them, maybe it's instinctual yeah. for them to go and try to get some fiber in the system. I but, don't know. But when you think about it, grass, normal, like everyday grass, looks like cannabis. It looks like it's the same colour. And the fact that they have an endocannabinoid system... Maybe that's actually what they're after. I'm wondering yeah, what I it mean, is. I bet you. I bet you anything you yeah, like. I, if a dog was in a cannabis field and they were sick, I bet you they'd eat the cannabis. I, I don't have much to bet, to be honest. But I think the main thing is that the animals have the re, uh, the receptors to get high from from um, marijuana. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the main thing, right? Well, why would they have it? I actually, I've been believe, I've said it in a couple of the other shows as well, that I actually believe because it's talked about the tree of life and everything. Now I have in a background 
um, for my background, I actually have um, an anarchy stuff and everything. Uh, anybody that knows me that knows why I've got the anarchy stuff up there and um, I didn't personally put it up, someone else did. But um, I'm into it as well because I've gotten into it since I got here. And um, the thing is with it, if you look at their tree of life, have a look at the leaves. There's the exact same amount of leaves on the tree in those leaves in that picture as on the cannabis plant. Seven. Seven leaves. Seven leaves. The cannabis leaf, seven leaves. And it's called the tree of life. They talk about the tree of life. And I believe it could be the tree of life. And um, like the water of life is water. Good water. It keeps us alive. But the tree of life, the burning bush that doesn't burn. You think about it. When you burn cannabis, what happens to it? Does it burn? No. It smokes. And that's the description of the holy burning bush. And um, did you know that you can't make holy, like the Christian holy oil, right? You can't make it without yeah. cannabis. The recipe is in Exodus... Anthony, I I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have five minutes left on uh, this call. I'm using a free account. Oh, no so, worries. Yep. Uh, I would have to go. Yep. Oh, no, no, no. Don't house. worry. I've got five minutes left as well. That's actually and I, what I do. Um, if you want to call back in, I'm going to restart the stream. If you want to call back in, feel free to it. Um, and what that is, is uh, it's a timer on everybody um, because I've got the free account as well. What I do, all I do is I just restart the stream. You can call straight back in. Um, if you want, I can restart it right now. And uh, all you got to do is hang no, up. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. I, I'm afraid I won't be able to hang up too much today. No, but, no, no, uh, no, not a problem. Uh, no, it's been I nice chatting to you actually. Um, feel free uh, if yeah, I do another call. Chatting. Yeah, if if I do another call in, feel free. Now, if anybody else wants to call in when I restart the um, stream, feel free to call in. Um, but no, it's, it's as a it's it's a it's a pure joke that this should be legal all over the globe. It is about time the prohibition. Yeah, there is enough research out there. Yeah, and um, yeah. it's like I think just focus. On like the positive aspects of them and like try to get as many people aware about it that would you meet anybody you know talk to them about it yeah the, the same thing to me about it you know i think it's just for me i just wanted to call in and i i, I was feeling you yeah you know, oh man it was, was like, great oh, man. talking to you i felt like you could for us to communicate with each other uh yeah. say hello you know and say hey there's another person somewhere uh, around the world <laughs> yeah who's willing to, uh, you know, speak to me over that. <laughs> oh, I said it, mate. Honestly, thank you very much for calling in. And uh, this particular one's got about two minutes, 40 seconds. So, um, Mike, I do appreciate calling in. And if I'm ever on again and you feel like calling in, feel free. The moment I start the uh, call in, feel free to call in. Yeah, you're very welcome. It's been a great yep. chatting with you. And uh, what, I'll, you, what I'll do, I might even restart the stream and let somebody else call in. But you don't just have to be one of yous, everybody. Yeah. I can have up to 50 people in this in this chat and we can have a mass conversation and that's yeah. what I want. I, sort of, I actually want people, like yeah. just one last question before you go. Do you believe it should be legal globally? Yeah. 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 And this is what I get from everybody. Uh, like... The celebration, Jubilee, uh, the 50th year or something like, like this. Yep. Like the you know, 10 years type stuff. Yeah. Um, what about particular that uh, would you like me to, you know, would you like to answer about? I'm not really uh, sure if I believe in Jubilee. No. Do, I, do you believe that cannabis should be legal globally all over the world? Oh, uh, uh, I'm the cannabis uh, to be and to everyone. Um, yes. For sure, without a doubt. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, Mike, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this particular conference and I'm going to restart it in about uh, a couple of minutes. 
So thank you very much for calling in and um, hopefully catch you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pleasure meeting you, uh, Anthony, and uh, best of luck. Pleasure meeting you, Mike. I wish I could pronounce your name, dude. I'm going to practice it. <laughs> Put the the syllables in the in the chat, Mike, and uh, that way I can learn it. So everybody, I'm just restarting this stream, and um, if I can get my mouse onto the screen, and um, if anybody else wants to call in, uh, the same numbers do apply. All you have to do is either go to the website that the address that I'm going to repost. And uh, if you call in by telephone, uh, all right, I'm just logging into the chat. So, all right, and the music. This free conference call is provided by Uber Conference. You are the first participant on this Uber conference. Please I'm always the first to person to join. It's one good thing about starting an Uber conference. You don't have to go saying, I'm the first, I'm first, I'm first. You, know, you don't have to go saying, I'm the first, I'm first, I'm first. <laughs> so many people do that on your chat. <laughs> okay, everybody, if you are in any other country, go directly to the uh, Uber Conference website, uh, Cannabis Protester. The phone number is there, 7814484278. You must use the pin 80230 uh, to get into the chat if you are calling in by phone. Otherwise, all you have to do is simply go to the Uber Conference Cannabis Protester website and you will get straight into the chat. Or yeah, you do have to sign up. It doesn't take long. It takes a couple of seconds. And it's great. Uber Comp, by the way, I, back, I give them so much free publicity, it's beyond a joke. It is one of the best conference calls you can use. Um, if you want long business conferences and everything, you can upgrade it. And mate, it's an absolutely incredible website. And by the way, it's the only website I give free press to uh, because it's brilliant. I use it all the time. I swear by it. And I know many other YouTubers that actually use it all the time. Now, uh, just jumping to uh, my normal main channel subjects. Um, yeah, I'm going to going to go back to doing streams on that folks but as i said i've been trying to get my medications and i've had to concentrate on actually getting those medications and um, it has been a little bit hard and um, everything so if you want to come on and everything and uh, have a chat with us uh, please feel free to do so because it's it's about time this got legal and it really truly is about time that this got legal folks it's just gone beyond a joke but i actually want to talk about something else uh, while i'm on here and that is the re reclaiming alcohol um i watched a video today on uh, a lady making using dry ice and alcohol a stupid way you don't even need the dry ice uh, to dissolve the cannabinoids. The, um, they're reclaiming the alcohol and they're using an alcohol distiller and they're just using it straight up. If you are using one of those alcohol, uh, like an airflow distiller or an actual distiller, and you've never used one before, you must throw away the first 200 milliliters, the first 200 milliliters of that alcohol that you reclaim is actually no longer ethanol, it's methanol throw it away, make a cleaning product out of it because if you use it and reuse it, you're putting methanol into your um, cannabis. Do not do that. I watched that video today and I was so shocked. I make my own alcohol, or I have done for many years. Um, it's legal here in Australia to make it, you just can't sell it. And uh, once gave myself alcoholic poisoning when I was working in the club industry and um, IE wound up uh, with yeah methanol poisoning so yeah throw away that first 200 milliliters it sort of I just couldn't believe it I'm watching this video um, and I just couldn't believe what they were doing because I wanted to know more about it how they're making the oil and if you want to know how they make the oil have a look at how these idiots do it there was there's some guy out there they're making it with butane butane and they're blowing themselves up 
Um, yeah, you can run your car on. Oh, methanol, yeah, it makes your car run faster, actually, methanol. Ethanol doesn't, but methanol will. Uh, you can use it in your remote control cars. That's what you run your remote control cars on, is methanol. Um, and planes, like remote control planes, you use methanol to run your planes. And um, that's what I do. I just add a bit of food dye in it and put it in with the rest of my methanol. And um, I haven't paid for um, my remote control plane fuel for many, many years. Yeah, ice and water. Um, but you don't even need ice and water. You can, dist you can get that out with just water. There's many different ways. You don't need the ice if you freeze it. It sort of... I, as I said, I've watched about 200 videos today because I wanted to be up to date. Uh, yeah, yeah, nitro, methanol, yeah, methane. Um, yeah, no, there's actually a methanol fuel as well, Greg. You can use a methanol fuel as well um, for certain uh, cars and certain uh, things. You just use a different engine. Um, yeah, I've been using methanol for years. The, um, the point is that if you are going to in the countries where it is legal do not reclaim it if you don't know how to do it learn about alcohol distillation i was shocked i actually put a massive warning on her video and told her to copy it and put it in a description um, because she never said that she never mentioned it once she's using it and just stuck it under there was not a mention of taking out the first 200 mils um, and if you do make alcohol and you're not take, throwing away that first 200 milliliters, you're poisoning yourself. It's deadly. But when I watch that video on the, on the butane one, where they're blowing themselves up because they're trying to cook it on stoves. They're trying to cook butane. Butane is lighter fluid, lighter fluid near a flame with all that gas escaping. You've only got to put it near the flame. And it's going to, like you can put it two foot away from the flame and it's, I guarantee that's going to blow up because the meth, the um, the butane fumes are going to go out and go down. What happens with butane? Uh, imagine a, imagine what actually dry, if you've ever seen dry ice, right? And this is why it blows up. If you've ever seen dry ice in water, right? You, what you do, you turn around and you put the dry ice in the water, in hot water, and it flows over the top and it spreads out. It's used in clubs and films to give that eerie effect. That's what I used to use at Halloween, Greg, was hot hot water and dry ice. That's how I made all those effects in those days. And um, the thing is, with it, that same thing happens with uh, acetone. It happens with uh, alcohol. It happens with butane. But with butane, it's a lot lighter and spreads a lot faster. This is why people are blowing themselves up. You don't use butane. You don't use any... If you're going to use anything, use standard alcohol. A bottle of vodka will do the same thing. Vodka. The only thing is with vodka, it hasn't been put... Um, the difference between bought, store-bought alcohol and pure alcohol is pure alcohol has been put through a carbon filter... Uh, some people here in Australia put it through a carbon filter instead of just putting wood chips or putting it into a uh, little keg. When I make my whiskey, I just I've got these little um, kegs, and what I did before it, I actually pour port into. If I want to make a Scotch whiskey, I pour port into the little keg, leave it in there for about a month, then tip it out, drink the port, and then start putting my alcohol into that. And that's what actually gives the Scotch whiskey its real flavour. It's not just the timber, it's actually the port. Um, bourbons, you, they um, use a different kind of wine barrel. And it's every whiskey, no matter what it is, it's been made inside an old wine barrel that's been discarded by the wine companies because you can't put a old, new wine into an old barrel. So they give it to the alcohol industry. And that's where all these flavours come from. It's sort of... Um, vodka is made from potatoes. It's alcohol. It just has still has the flavour in it. They're just the flavours of how they've made it. Corn, moonshine is made with corn. But it's still alcohol. And you can use that. You don't need to go out and buy surgical alcohol. All surgical alcohol is, it's been put through a carbon filter. That's it. There's no difference. Um... Or you can get different uh, ones and everything like that. Um, 
But if you are making alcohol, but if you are reclaiming the alcohol after you do it, for God's sake, after watching that video, I've got to tell everybody about it. That's fucking stupid. Um, not telling people. Someone could die from that video. And um, But I wanted to know how they made my medical cannabis. So I looked and I couldn't find a single video from a uh, thing. I found plenty of people that worked in the industry that spoke about it. Yeah, it will make you go blind or you can die. And um, But simple water. Water. Wash the fucking thing. And yes, some people use ice as well. It helps what the ice does. They just don't want to freeze it. So they just, um, instead of freezing it and then washing it, they put the ice and the water into it. That's, as I said, that was one of the videos I can go through. Where's, uh, I can go through the history of it. And um, it's, it's like some guy was using a washing machine and to do the same process. Uh, it's um, amazing. But the medical cannabis and they use alcohol they wash it with alcohol and everything like that yet they'll get a cleaner grade apparently with water and yet why aren't they using this but now if anybody else wants to call in now if you live in america and whatever i want to hear from you as well because like i know it's not it's legal but it's not legal sort of thing in america and i'm telling everybody on 420 everybody please go to the um Go along to... Oh, sorry. Oh, what happened there? Oh, shit. Oh, hang on. Something's happened. What's happened here? Oh, shit. We've got a problem. Uh, sorry, folks. Something's happened. Oh, I'm just trying to get me picture back. There we go. Now, don't forget, everybody, on the 4th of April, they, uh, there are um, plenty of... Uh, there's three major things happening at night. Um, all the things will pop up in a minute all the different places and everything like that that you can actually go to to um thing you can go to parliament house canberra go to victoria park in sydney flagstaff gardens in melbourne and parliament house in canberra now these are nighttime events now through the day go along to your local member's office now no matter what country you're in i reckon we should shut the then i'm dead serious I reckon we should take this one step further. Let's shut business down for one day. One day. Everybody that... Because I tell you now, there's more, there's more users out there than people realise. The only ones that don't use are these fundamentalist Christians. Trust me. I even know Christians that smoke. And um, everybody take the day off work and go to whether it's your Senate member or whoever, whatever country it is, whoever represents you in, in your government, go along to their offices on April 20th and protest outside their office and say that this should be legal. It's The prohibition has to end. It really has to. Because the, do you know what's going to happen? The moment it is legalised, the very moment this is legalised, crime rates are going to plummet. Well, one, they're going to have no no one to bust for drugs. The, the drug lords are pretty much going to go out of business within a couple of weeks. Once, uh, within about eight weeks, I've worked it out, it will um, take about eight weeks to um, kill the drug industry because once everybody can grow their own plants at home, Oh, no, say maybe 12 weeks because they're going to have to get the equipment to grow it. Um, so say about 12 weeks. So once it's legal every and everybody can grow it all over the globe, there's not going to be a drug lord out there that's going to make money off cannabis. It's going to kill the Lebanon industry, everything. The only people that are going to make money is the medical side um, of it. But it's going to kill the drug lords. Uh, not kill them, it's going to kill their finances. Um, and this is one of the problems because while it's illegal they're leaving it open to crime lords who are making money out of it they're using it to fund other crimes and things like that but the moment it's legal they don't have that ability anymore because everybody can get it no one's going to buy it if they can grow it why in the fuck would they buy it so if it was legal and they could make their own oils 
and trust me all they got to do plenty of videos out there if you live in america or everything like that you can make it with just coconut oil you can make it with milk you can make it with fucking water you don't need fucking alcohol you'll get a much cleaner because the ones i was watching today i fucking was shocked they actually had a much cleaner resin it was pure fucking white it was pure fucking resin there were no contaminants in it in the alcohol there's always contaminants um, because the alcohol breaks a plant down apparently but when they wash it with water there's no contaminants because all water does is wash the resin it melts the resin the resin goes through it melts the resin off the plant and it goes through and everything like that i think that video was about an hour and a half long, no hour and 43 minutes actually i remember that uh, i think he was from amsterdam or something like that and um, i'm thinking to myself why in the fuck are they using alcohol to make medical grade cannabis when they can get pure fucking resin by simply washing it with fucking water well he used ice water um same as a few others used ice water and um but the thing is you think about it what would you sooner use would you sooner use a medical cannabis that was made with just water or would you sooner use something that was made with alcohol because that alcohol stays in it there's a percentage of alcohol that stays in it the sugars from the alcohol stays in it the medical cannabis i used when i was in canberra was made with coconut oil and a lot of the medical cannabis that um, is made around the world by the people a lot of it is made with simple coconut oil olive oil you can use olive oil for fuck's sake and actually i reckon olive oil would taste better than the coconut oil because i always said why didn't they fucking use coconut oil if they could use this like i knew it can be made in oil when i was in canberra and um so why in the fuck are they using alcohol they're not getting any more resin they're just getting a little bit of wastage because of the oil but that can be reclaimed yes that can actually then be reclaimed with alcohol make a different grade of cannabis oil um, it would take you longer to get anything out of it but all you're doing is you're reclaiming the resin that's in the cheesecloth and you're taking the oil out and everything like that there's so many things on that bloody youtube out there that dead set i really did watch 200 fucking videos i counted them i went through i couldn't believe the fucking list because i i think i started watching at six o'clock today i then had to go and get some stuff for my home repairs and uh, take some stuff back from home repairs that i had done and um yeah i soon might have a kitchen too by the way <laughs> and my laundry back um i haven't had a kitchen since i've been here and um so yeah hopefully when i finish these repairs i'll have my kitchen bag but um no dead set folks these things are out there they're available to you um but in australia they're not available to us and they are available to the politicians living in canberra yes mr hunt you can go down the street and grow your own fucking plant but us poor suckers here that actually physically need it can't you want us to pay i think it's yeah what does it work out no okay now that i know the price of it if it's a hundred what did you say it was greg it was uh 190 dollars a quarter so that's 180 dollars for half which is i know about a two-week supply for anybody so you're paying 180 dollars for two weeks so it's double the amount cost double the amount to get the medical and there's no fucking difference except they make it with alcohol they don't remove anything out of it do you know the only reason why they've got a thc and i've looked into it i've done so much research um because like well i've been looking at ways to do it i've been doing research the only way they okay the daisy jimal okay i've got a um or well, not on yet the dosage i can uh for the day is 20 milligram 20 mils of uh, cbd 12 mils of thc um i can get the just the cbd if i want it's just another script so that's another 450 fucking dollars um means if i take a dose i can't drive for four hours 
Um, and I wouldn't anyhow. I've never done that when I've taken Endone. Oh, I've had my license. 360. Oh, okay. Fuck, that is expensive. Um, do you know, Greg? Do you know, fucking, as I was saying earlier, Greg, that is, that is more than 10 times what it was 30 years ago. An ounce in the old days was 30 fucking dollars. <laughs> fucking hell, 360 bucks. But, see, with medical cannabis, it's a fucking joke. To last somebody for two weeks, they expect me to pay 900 fucking dollars. It means I can't live. I get 910 per fortnight. That's it. That's all I get. So to get my medicine would leave me with 10 fucking dollars. And it can't be done. I tried. I tried to do it. I tried... Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Um, I wouldn't be able. To, I wouldn't be able to use the illegal stuff, mate. I've got to buy medical because with lung cancer, it sort of. Um, yeah, I actually, and I wouldn't do it any other way. The thing is, it's legal in your countries, but not legal here, unfortunately. Uh, only the medical stuff is legal. And, um, but the whole point is, it's sort of. To force somebody to not be able to pay their bills, to force somebody to live on 10 fucking dollars for a period of two fucking weeks when the average weekly shop here costs $180 for most people, costs four, five hundred, six hundred dollars for a family, um, because I know that because my best friend, that's their shopping bill every week, 600 fucking dollars. And if you're going to buy medicine for your, uh, your family, which a lot of people actually have to do, they've got relatives. Um, I've spoken, as I said, I've spoken to four people today, cancer patients. Those four fucking people that have cancer can't afford their meds. Their family have to buy it for them. And um, in other words, scrimp and save between each other. And that's not right. It is not right. Mr. Hunt, you need to put this on the PBS. You need to put this on Closing the Gap. ND NDIS, you need to add it to your schedule. It is a drug. Yes, it's unregulated unre at the moment. Why is it unregulated? Because you haven't fucking allowed it to be fucking regulated. Fuck me. Dead set. Honestly, that letter, and I want to play, play that letter for everybody again. Oh, oh shit, where is it? Oops, I just got an email. Um, a summary of the Uber conference. Where is it? Uh, there we go. I'm going to play this letter once again. Because I believe everybody... But what really pissed me off, that it didn't come from the fucking minister. It came from the fucking... another section of the government altogether. Which is a fucking joke. Why in the fuck is it coming from another section of the government when I wrote to the federal government? That's fucking wrong. And it really is. It is dead set fucking wrong. I'm writing to the minister and yet he sends me to another section of the government all to fucking gather, which is bullshit and expects me and I, I seriously I don't care what people think it's sort of this is a genuine letter from the minister I, the, I told the minister of health who I am I told him everything and like I've got a bit of a rep in Canberra unfortunately and I actually do because um, back in my club days you remember when I had the uh, I don't know I'll have to talk to you about that one I had an ice cream truck uh, was, uh, my boss used to sack me every year for a couple of months to take a holiday because I'd never take a fucking holiday and he sacked me for a period of time just to make sure that um, I had a holiday. And so I took up an ice cream business, which is what I did when I was uh, 16 to the age of 19, before I went to Queensland. And I tried to open that same business in Queensland. I ended up protesting when the Shearers protested down in Canberra. Drove an ice cream truck all the way down to Canberra with a break and ended up breaking my gearbox down at Goulburn. Uh, hit a massive pothole and it shattered my gearbox. The whole bottom of the gearbox disappeared. And I um, was sitting under the car waiting for the truck to arrive. 
and everything. And he rang me up and said, oh, mate, I'm not going to be there till tomorrow because I'd organised for a truck to come and take my car home and I was still going to then get a, find my way to Canberra and protest down there on my own. Now, I had signs all over my truck. And um, I said to um, myself, OK, I've got a few, I've got to, just got to work out how to get this on the truck. And I was under the truck and then a couple of gorgeous looking blondes, I still know one of them today, pulled up beside me and started tooting the horn and I'm wondering what's going on. And I thought they wanted me to move the car and I forgot I had the sign, show your support, toot the horn. And they're, they're tooting the horn saying, you're doing a wonderful job, mate. Yeah, you should, you, they should be giving you the licence and all that. They'd read the signs, everything, before I even realised it. And after seeing these girls, I wanted to impress them and I thought, OK, how can I fix this fucking truck? And uh, there was a guy that had some rope and some wire. Gave me the rope and the wire, and we rebuilt. He, we sort of spoke about it, because I knew hemp. And guess what? Guess what sort of rope it was? Hemp rope, hemp rope, with hemp rope and wire threaded through it to make a like a basket, and it was pretty tight. And we pulled it tight around the gearbox and made a basket underneath the gearbox and virtually almost all the way around except to where the shifter was. And it was so sealed and well sealed, this is how good hemp is, that no oil leaked. Not one drop of fucking oil leaked around Canberra because like while I was down there protesting, the news story came around and actually did a news story. I thought they were doing it more about the protest. But no, what they did the news story was about how I repaired this gearbox with a... Um, yeah, and um, tied it up with hemp rope and wire. And it didn't leak. So that's what they did the story on. They were amazed that here's this bloke protesting Canberra, driving an ice cream truck, going around um, Parliament House playing green streets. Valderie, Valdera, Valderie, da 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 Valderie, Valdera. And mate, for the whole time I was down there protesting in Parliament House, that's all they heard in Parliament House. Anybody near the windows, uh, I think it was for two offices in, couldn't hear anything but me playing my fucking ice cream truck every time I went past. They couldn't do a press interview on the doorsteps. So that was the start of my reputation with Canberra. Then I started another little movement, Remove Kevin 07. It actually caused the Prime Minister to get kicked out. Started lobbying all the members of the Labor Party, then started lobbying the Labor Party itself. And um, when I say members of the Labor Party, I mean the members that joined it. I used to sort of be a member, sort of. And I lobbied them and everybody else started doing it and we ended up becoming a movement and it actually removed a, a Prime Minister out of Australia. And I can honestly say I'm the guy that started that movement. So I've got a bit of a rep down at Canberra. I made sure I told the Minister of Health who the fuck I was. But I've also got a reputation for being a uh, stand-up guy. I let them have their say and um, everything. But then they turn around and... Um, yeah, it's um, an absolute joke that he turns around and then gives me this letter and this is what the letter said, folks. Dear Mr. Avery, thank you for your email to the Honourable Brad Hazard MP, Minister for Health and Medical Research, about legalization of cannabis. Minister Hazard has asked me to respond. I am sorry to hear about your health conditions. I acknowledge how distressing chronic pain would be and appreciate your desire to explore all treatment options. In Australia, cannabis medicines are lawfully prescribed within a medical framework to ensure patients have confidence in the safety of their medicines and doctors have a wide choice of quality controlled medicines available for their patients. In NSW, any doctor can legally prescribe a cannabis medicine if they believe it is an appropriate treatment option and they have obtained the relevant authorities. A doctor can apply for authorization to prescribe an unregistered cannabis medicine for their patient using the special access scheme by lodging an application using the online system on the Therapeutic Goods Administration website www.tga.gov.au slash special hyphen access hyphen scheme hyphen online system. 
The NSW government has implemented initiatives to support doctors wishing to prescribe cannabis medicines and improve patient access. In January 2018, the NSW government established the NSW Cannabis Medicines Advisory Service to provide expert clinical advice and support for medical practitioners www.medicinalcannabis.nsw.gov.au slash health professionals slash nsw hyphen cannabis hyphen medicines hyphen advisory hyphen service right parenthesis steps were also taken in september 2019 to simplify the application process with the majority of doctors prescribing cannabis medicines no longer requiring prior authorization from nsw health the only exceptions being when prescribing to children under the age of 16 years. Pa oh, I hate how that does that. That's what you do when you Steps use. were also taken in September 2019 to simplify the application process with the majority of doctors prescribing cannabis medicines no longer requiring prior authorization from NSW Health. The only exceptions being when prescribing to children under the age of 16 years patients with a drug dependency or for a clinical trial of an unregistered medicine. In recognition of the potential for cannabis medicines to alleviate the symptoms of some serious conditions, the NSW government has invested over $9 million to fund clinical trials exploring cannabis use for children with severe epilepsy, palliative care patients with advanced cancer and patients undergoing chemotherapy experiencing nausea and vomiting. Thank you again for writing. If you would like more information, please visit www.medicinalcannabis.nsw.gov.au. Yours sincerely, Dr. Carrie Chan, PSM Chief Health Officer and Deputy Secretary, Population and Public Health. Now, once again, I want to make everybody aware. Now, it's not just New South Wales, it's all over Australia. Any doctor can legally prescribe a cannabis medicine if they believe it's an appropriate treatment. And trust me, even my GP um, wouldn't prescribe it to me, even though she knows how bad it is. She didn't want to be a drug dealer. Yet she freely fucking prescribes Endo. They freely do it. They don't have a problem. They freely prescribe fucking, uh, what do they call it? Methadone. Now, methadone, guess what? Do you know what methadone is? Methadone is endone. It's the same fucking thing. It's just a different fucking name. Oxycodone is another name. Uh, methadone is liquid form. That's all it is. It's a liquid form that you can drink. Endone is a tablet you take. Oxycodone is a very small tablet you take. And yet the government freely prescribes it. They know that it's a problem. They know it. It's in all their medical journals, the Oxycodone, they call what was it? The I read, I was in my doctor's and I saw it sitting on the on the chair. She had it propped up on a chair for her patients to see. The oxycodone epidemic. But see, the reason why there's an epidemic on it is the simple fact: it's the only drug that kills pain successfully. But no, it's not. Oh, that's right. There's a drug called cannabis. That's a natural fucking herb. See, in the old days, when they treated pain, they used herbs. Guess what? Cannabis or calamus back in Hebrew days, that's what it was called in Hebrew days, was calamus. And guess what? Everybody go and get your Bible. In the Bible, Exodus verse, chapter 30, verse 22. Have a read. I'll actually read it out for you. So if you're a Christian and believe that uh, cannabis sh shouldn't be legal, well, you need to go and read this. Moreover, the Lord said unto Moses, saying, Take thou shall unto... Oh, hang on, I need to fucking magnify. Sorry, guys, I'm blind. This is just old age. I've got a little special one. Where is it? Moreover, the Lord said, spake unto Moses, uh, take, uh, where is it? Uh, fuck, I need the, I've got the magnifying glass. 
I've got the super magnifier there and it uh, only reads one word at a time. There we go. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto the, the principal spices of pure myrrh. Mer. Either way, that was another. That was a uh, name for the resin. And um, but myrrh since has been changed. Name has changed over the years. Myrrh used to be any type of resin for herbal resin. There were many forms of herbal resin. Uh, take uh, pure myrrh, five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even two hundred and fifty shekels, and of sweet calamus. Right. Hebrew name back in those days for cannabis, calamus, 250 shekels, and Cassidia, 500 shekels, and after that, the shekel of sanctuary and of olive oil and him. And thou shalt make it into a holy anointment. Anoint compound after the art of apocary apocary or I can can never pronounce that fucking word it shall be holy anointing oil so if you are a Christian out there guess what if you want real holy anointing oil you need cannabis and it's got the exact fucking recipe you don't have to use 250 shekels you just got to Okay, you use X amount of uh, one thing, you use X amount of thing, and you just do it in the... It's pretty much half of this, half of that, this much of that. That's it. That's the exact fucking recipe. See, they used to know how to get the calamus, which is cannabis resin, but myrrh is another form of the resin. Um, there's also um, some. There's an argument over that one. Some people say, no, 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 it's always been this. It's always been that. But it hasn't. If you look into the history and you find myrrh, and it was registered as myrrh, uh, there's records of myrrh in somebody's tomb, but there was no myrrh. What it was, it was cannabis resin. It was found in the tomb, and it was called myrrh. Um, calamus, is, there's plenty of records of that of being this is why it's all hidden folks see they don't want you to know all the names all they want you to know the name the only name they want you to know is marijuana because back in the day when the mexicans came into america in back in 1918 they used the fact that the uh, mexicans used to use cannabis but the mexicans didn't call it cannabis they called it marijuana so that was the mexican name for it so they used that name and they made it out as the evil drug. Not fucking evil. We've got a cannabinoid system. Our body needs the fucking thing. I'm wondering if this is why we can't regenerate our fucking bodies. And the Lord said unto Moses, go and grab boy. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Greg just wrote, for those of you not reading the chat, Greg just wrote, and the Lord spake unto Moses, go and grab your bong, mate. <laughs> Pretty much, but no, he said, go and do what we're doing now. Go and make some medical cannabis. I've actually got, that's the one thing I actually do have in my house. I actually have holy anointing oil made correct way. It's made with the exact recipe out of the Bible and uh, made with using CBD oil, uh, which is legal. And... Um, mixed exactly with the recipe out of the Bible. And guess what? It's not just holy anointing oil. It helps the swelling. You rub it into your bones like other oils, uh, like um, deep heat. You rub it in like deep. It doesn't burn or anything like that. But guess what? The swelling in your knee, or if you've got a knee like mine, the swelling in my knee goes down. And uh, it's actually made using CBD oil. That's the only thing I can fucking afford. It was like uh, 20, what was it? Uh, 20 bucks for that. And um, you could drink the whole lot. You wouldn't get anything out of it. It's only CBD. But um, it's actually the recipe for holy anointing oil. And it works. 
it actually helps the swelling in my knee go down. So they say there's not enough fucking medical fucking research out there. That is bullshit. That bed set is the biggest fucking bullshit I have ever fucking heard in my life. That, oh no, we don't know if it's... Um, if it works, it sort of, yeah, no, 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 we, we've got no medical research. Well, why in the fuck? Wow, I just watched how many people are watching on my other channels. Holy shit. Got a few video viewers over there. And um, it sort of, um, yeah, you won't see that one either, by the way. It doesn't come for some unknown readings and doesn't work with restreaming the chat. Um, but uh, sort of because um, I just checked on that chat to see how many people were in there and I fucking near died but um, no the fact that um, it's not legal folks it's wrong so I'm going to end the stream in a couple of seconds I've been going for two hours my voice is stuffed and um, I think I'll tell you what Greg I'll email you my phone number man if you ever want to have a chat uh, sort of we'll have a chat that um, the whole point is, folks, that cannabis should be legal. Cannabis has been used for over 12,000 years of recorded history. Well, that's all been recorded history that we've got is 12,000 years. And it's recorded all the way back in that history. It's been found in tombs. It's been recorded as medical healing. The Chinese have been using it for over 6,000 fucking years. 6,000 fucking years. And uh, I'll send you that uh, other thing to you, Greg, as well, which is better than the thing you sent me. And um, 12,000 fucking years, folks. Oh, we've got no proof. Fuck. There's 12,000 fucking years. If that's not fucking proof that it's being used for medical fucking purposes, Greg Hunt, and guess what? I am going to ring your office on Wednesday. So get ready for the call because it is going to happen. And I'm going to ring every fucking day that I can that I'm not at college. Every fucking working day, Mr. Hunt, I'm going to ring your office and I'm going to talk to your staff until you get on the phone and start talking to the people. I'm also going to ring the Minister of Health Seeing he's written to, of course, got someone else to write to me, I'm going to ring his office as well. And, um, yeah, so if you're out there and you want to have a listen to a good conversation, folks, uh, no matter what channel you are watching this video on or stream on. So now if you're over on the Cannabis Protester website, don't forget the, uh, the link to that is in the description the copy of the letter is in the description if you want to have a read of the letter and go to those websites yourself and have a read. And that is a genuine letter from the Minister from the Minister of Health in New South Wales, but it's the same in every state. Any doctor can prescribe it. So why in the fuck? And this is one of the questions I want to ask Mr. Hunt. Why in the fuck are doctors not prescribing it? They're not prescribing See, they're afraid they're going to be arrested. They think it's illegal still. They, even though it's not illegal, they don't want to become a drug dealer. See, oh, there's no proof. This is what they say. Oh, my, my doctor, I don't want to become a... That's my exact doctor's exact words. I don't want to be a drug dealer. A doctor doesn't want to be a drug dealer. Hang on, what do doctors do? Can they, can, oh, look, I'm going to ask the chat room, the few of you that are still in the chat room now, what do doctors give everybody? One word. Anybody in the chat room, what does doctors, what do doctors prescribe to everybody? Five letters. That's all I want to see. Five letters off everybody. Can everybody just type that into chat right now? Doctors don't want to be drug dealers. It's a bit of a hint, by the way. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Anybody else? They don't want to be drug dealers. And what do they give everybody? They give you a little fucking yellow in Australia. They go either a blue and white, green and white, yellow and white, depending on whatever colour fucking they choose for their, their prescriptions. They give you drugs. They give us poor souls out there in pain addictive 
drugs. Yet they won't prescribe a drug that works. They won't prescribe a drug that's non-addictive. They won't prescribe a drug that heals. Cannabis has been proven to heal cancer. Yeah, oh yeah, they call it medication, but it's still fucking drugs. Still fucking drugs. Like, I'll tell you what, I've got my, I've got my little drug bag here, except two of the, the, the others aren't. They're locked in a, in a pretty heavy fucking safe. My safe's even better than the one at the chemist. Okay, that's one drug there. 10 milligrams of that one. That one is 4 milligrams. That's 2. 75 milligrams, 3. 50 milligrams, 4. Uh, that's 1,000 milligrams, 5. That's 40 milligrams, 6. That's uh, 100 milligrams, that's 7. 60 milligrams, that's 8. And you're hearing the rule drops, by the way. That's uh, 1,000 milligrams, 9. That's, uh, fuck, it doesn't say that. Uh, oh, that, that's 10. Oh, that's a herbal medicine. That's 11. That's 12. That's 13. 14 types of medications I have to take to stay alive. Why? Because they have been prescribing me narcotics. Because of those narcotics, those narcotics have led to other problems over the years. But the problem is if I don't take those narcotics, right, I'm going to be in chronic pain. In other words, I'll be in hospital and they're going to, do you know the first thing they're going to give me when I'm in hospital? Morphine. That's what they used to give me before they prescribed Endo. I've been down there, I've had drug trials. I'm a, they tried even epileptic medication. Now, some epileptic medications do actually work for pain. It's called uh, gabapentin and epilim. Unfortunately, I'm highly allergic to the two. They never worked. Um, every single non-narcotic drug they tried never stopped the pain. They, I had to spend a whole day down in uh, the Royal North Shore Hospital and I was assessed by seven doctors. And, um, no, actually, I don't think it was in North Shore. Another hospital. Can't think of the name of the fucking hospital. But it's down near there, somewhere near there. Um, and, um, I was seven doctors. I had to sit before a panel of doctors. Psychiatrists, uh, because one, they don't prescribe these drugs if you are suicidal. So you've got to sit, you sort of shrink a social worker, uh, three pain doctors. Um, oh, there's that fucking picture. There it is there. There's the picture of the tree of life. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven fucking leaves. I'm going to get that up on the thing. Uh, and guess what he's grabbing? A bud. He's actually grabbing... Uh, that is the tree of life. I'm going to get this picture up on the screen. Hang on, folks. I'm going to get before I end the stream. I'm going to get that picture up on the screen. Sorry. Uh, I just got to go back to this one there. Oh, hang on. Uh, I'm going to go back to studio mode. And I'm going to add this picture. Oh fuck! Where are they? I don't even know where the fuck they are. Um. Personalize. Uh, Slideshow, one in and up. So I've got to find the file. Just bear with me. I'm going to add this picture. And I want you to have a look at this picture. You look at it. It's pop. He's picking off what looks to be a bud. And the leaves look to be cannabis. You have a look at this. And this is Ananaki. And they call it the tree of life in the Ananaki pictures. That's why I believe it's the tree of life. Uh, where is it? Image. Sorry, folks, this will take a couple of seconds. Um, new image. Browse. One Ananaki. Where's one Ananaki? One Ananaki. Uh, one Ananaki. I'm just going to find this image. And you, you tell me, folks, what do you think this plant is? Okay. This is, that's not a picture of it. Hang on, I'm going to find it. Oh, and I'll show you another picture. Okay, this is one picture of it. 
Okay, where is it? Okay. Um, that's a small, I'll enlarge it so fucking large that you can see it. And then I'm going to move it all the way to the back. And I'm going to turn off that one. No, not that one. No, I'm going to turn that one back on. That one? Is it that one? Yep. And so I just got to turn off a couple of the images. So you can actually see what's going on. Is that on? Image 5, is that it? Yeah, image 5. Look at the leaf. Alright, I'm going to add another one. And while you're doing that, have a look at the leaf. I'll, I'll try and click on that. Uh, shit, I can't make it any fucking bigger. Oh, maybe I can. There we go. Have a look at the fucking leaf. What does it look like, folks? It looks like a fucking cannabis plant. And it's called the Tree of Life. It's sort of... Um, and then another image, he's grabbing what looks to be a bud. I'm just going to find that one, and I'm going to bring that up for you now. I'm just going to find it. Oh, where is it? Um, a lot of images. And, um, yeah. So, it's there. It's definitely there in history. Oh, fuck, I got to, wow, there's fucking hundreds of images in this file. This is what I have for, these are what I have in my backdrop. There's one, I'll say another good one too while I'm in here, if I can find it. It actually shows you a nuclear bomb. It's 12,000 fucking years ago. And, uh, see, they talk about, now here it is. I'll, sh I'll show you this one first. All right, you have a look at the A-bomb. See, the Anunnaki hid their weapons. Anunnaki hid their weapons. And they talk about it in their tablets. What does that look like to everybody? A fucking bit of a shock, eh? Uh, but, um, yeah, I think that's what World War II was over, actually, was... Uh, they were looking for the weapons at the Anunnaki, because it just so happens that the Anunnaki tablets were discovered just before World War II. And I think that scroll was discovered in World, just before World War II. And there's so many images that where they've got them, and these, uh, I don't know what they call those little prey clay cylinders, forgotten the name of them. I'm still trying to find that image where he's grabbing the bud off the tree. Similar image to that one I just showed you. No, that one. But, um, yeah. But that one with the... With the atom bomb that you're all looking at now. That is 12,000 years ago. And what is, what is it? It's a fucking atom bomb. See, technology's been around for 12,000 years. I believe this plant was either given us to it, given to us by the Anunnaki, and um, it's been forgotten that it was given to us as a gift, the tree of life. Because we have a cannabinoid, well, see, they're supposed to have uh, created this, by the way. Um, that's pretty much what the tablets say. And... Um, before the Bible was written, and um, they don't tell you that. Like, where is this in the fuck? I've got too many fucking images. The, the, these images that I'm showing you, these are my uh, wallpaper. Um, I've got a rotating slideshow for my wallpaper, all Anunnaki. And, um, yeah. And they don't tell you this, folks. They truly don't tell you this shit. That, um, Cannabis has been around for so long. Nuclear weapons have been here before. So even in India, there's a site um, in India where bodies are burnt and everything. And um, they don't tell you this sort of shit. Oh, what the fuck is going on with these images? Now I'll do the, do the easiest one. I'll go all the way down the fucking bottom and go upwards might work better. So like there's images in Egypt of helicopters and shit like that. But 
the one of the tree of life there it is that's the one I want this image here it looks like he is grabbing a bud off a tree and look at the leaf look at the leaf folks what in the fuck does that remind you of question you got a date of the uh, depiction just played devil's ad that's mind blowing yeah 12,000 years ago guys 12,000 years ago almost looks like a map of Australia um, which yeah but yeah look at the leaf look at the and it looks like he's grabbing a bud off the tree it's the tree of life yeah it's it's amazing folks it sort of but that other one that i just showed you that one there they used to make these rollers and everything you look at that that is the atom bomb they didn't fucking make it they fucking found it and then they started testing them because see the anunnaki talk about these in these tablets and um yeah that's what the world war was over and america showed off when they found it and um but anyhow folks look i'm gonna end this stream thank you to everybody i'll give everybody a shout out who's still in the chat okay oh we've only got three in the chat and it's, oh thank you for subscribing unfortunately i don't know who that was i don't know why i don't know who that was it should show me who the fuck it is. I do apologise. I don't know who subscribed. Um, tell me in the chat who's just subscribed. But um, myself and Edward's still in the chat. And uh, Edward Bevington and Greg Sibyl is in the chat. My moderator. But yeah, folks, I'm going to end the stream. Oh, hang on. I didn't show you that atom bomb, did I? Did I show you? No, I didn't fucking show you that atom bomb. There, there you go. They found it. It wasn't fucking made, folks. They found the fucking thing. And that's what the war was really over. And they were testing it. And they tested it on Japan. To me, that's the exact same fucking thing. And um, everything... Look, folks, as you can hear, my voice is almost gone. So I'm going to end it now. But um, as I said, keep an eye out for Wednesday during the day. Um, oh, no... That's still, um, Edward, yeah, I still talk about that, but because I'm streaming to uh, certain channels, I'm not talking about that subject. That only gets discussed on this channel. And um, because, as I said, everybody knows I've got multiple. I've got about 30 channels. And, um, but at the moment, because of what's going on, especially with my pain, um, yeah. So those of you out there that... Um, have actually um, got pain problems and things like that please feel free if I do manage to get the minister online on Wednesday join into the chat and actually talk to us and um, because you are going to hear the exact same conversation as me I'm actually going to um, just have the phone conversation with him and the phone will be directly under the microphone so you're going to hear everything that I hear and um, you won't hear me identify myself um, with because when you talk to the minister's office, you've got to give certain identifiers. Um, when you request to have the minister, i.e., uh, talk about emails and things like that, my private emails, you won't hear all that. So I've got to go now. Uh, Greg, I'm going to send you an email uh, with a, that other thing that I was telling you about. And um, I'll send you my phone number, man. Feel free to talk to me. Give me a ring anytime, man. You're welcome to. Um, as I said um, yeah so thank you very much everybody for joining me I do appreciate all your support and everything over the years and um, yeah so I will do a uh, chat on that subject uh, Edward in a little not tonight I'm too tired but I haven't stopped it sort of hasn't happened for over a year and um, I've got a funny feeling until um, that starts back up that it's not going to happen again. Uh, nothing has happened for over a year. And um, 
but whilst I'm on this channel and the other channels, yeah, I don't talk about those subjects. This is totally unrelated to these channels and to this subject. But this subject can come across to all my channels because I do believe that it needs to come across to everybody. So um, thank you very much for everybody uh, that joined me. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to the Cannabis uh, Protest channel. Go across over to the thing. The link is in the description. And those of you that uh, want to call me in chat, feel free next time. And please call in. I don't care. Like, yeah. But I do want to talk about cannabis. And I'd love for you guys to talk about it. I, like, I'd love for some growers to get online. I'd love for some users to get online from America so that we can get this message across to this government here that it works and it doesn't thing. And see, the only time I've ever known anybody to get addicted to cannabis, and I'm just going to quickly get get it on there, is when they were lacing it with acid and LSD. And they did. Back in the day, they were lacing LSD and other things into the, into the thing. Those people got addicted to it and then all of a sudden they were giving them the actual other drug. This is why people went um, thing because, see, the drug dealers were lacing it. This is why we need to legalise it so people can grow their own and know that it is safe because while ever it's in the hands of criminals and, like, real criminals, I'm not just talking about the grower, I'm talking about real criminals and they do exist out there in, in Australia, especially in Australia and in other countries as well. And they lace this other stuff into it and, unfortunately... I get given that same drug by doctors. I want to get off it because it's killing me. And I can't afford the drugs. I really can't. Because I would have to live on $10 a fortnight. And I wouldn't be able to pay my bills just to have my medication. And it's bullshit. And it really is. Anyhow, guys, thank you very, very much. And uh, as soon as I get off, Greg, I'll send you that email. Mate, I'm going to go and check the emails at the moment I get off here. And I'll send you that email. And, um, yeah. No worries, guys. I will uh, catch us all later. And don't forget to watch on Keep an Eye Out for Wednesday because I'm going to ring the minister's office. Thank you very much, everybody. I might even ring both ministers, the one that wrote to me even. So thank you very much, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. And those that have never clicked that little bell, if you don't click it, you don't get notified. Thank you very much. And uh, don't forget that this stream was especially... Um, Proud to be sponsored by ZS, what is ZS.com. And I uh, almost said the rest of the name would might, might have given the uh, might have given the product away. But um, yes, this stream is proudly presented by what is ZS.com. And ZS is coming soon. Very oh, hopefully very soon. And um, as soon as we make enough stock to get it out on the world market. That's also one of the other reasons why I haven't been on because I still have to keep that one running. And um, so, yeah, it's uh, and it proudly supports the legalisation of cannabis. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. Thanks, Greg, and I'll send you an email in about five minutes, mate. So I'll catch you all later, and thank you very much. And don't forget to watch out for Wednesday's stream. Thank you, and I'll see you all later. And this stream... Oops, I forgot to actually put it up there. As I said, this stream is proudly brought to you by whatiszs.com. Thank you. Goodbye.